Hello, this video is to teach you how to create a new gradebook for the first time in your Illuminate login. So I am logged into Illuminate under my teacher password. On the top I have gradebook. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose my gradebooks. Now you'll notice I don't have any gradebooks created so it's automatically prompting me to create a gradebook. You have two options. You can do a point-based gradebook or you can do a standards-based gradebook. Most staff here at Steel Canyon use points-based so they can type in the points of how much an assignment is instead of the standards-based. So we click Next. You want to come up with a name for your gradebook. It should include perhaps the subject, which block number it is for you, if you want to include the quarter or the year, all of those things are good to add so you can find your gradebook later if you need to. So let's say I am calling this block two precal quarter one. You can include the year if you would like, it's up to you. And then for by class, this is where your students are. So I wanna find where it's quarter one and quarter two students. I'm not going to choose this because that's my TAs, but here it is, quarter one, quarter two, pre-cal. This is my block two class. They meet both on A and B days. So that's the one I'm going to click. You can add more than you want if it's the same pointing system. So say you have an A day and then a B day, you can choose if you want to include them in the same gradebook. It's really up to you. Once you have that filled in, we can click Save. And now when you go to My Gradebooks and Gradebook List, you're going to now see the gradebook that you created. It's saying, do you want to show this in your menus? That's yes. If you click No, this is going to go into the Inactive Gradebooks. Showing in Parent Portal, this is showing yes. So whatever I type in here, the parents and the students can see. And notice it's telling me I'm not sharing this gradebook with anybody yet. If you want to change the name of your class, you can click on details and it'll change, allow you to change the students and or the name of the class. So I'm going to click into the gradebook. So it's saying that it's got no assignments in the gradebook, so it's not showing the students that are enrolled in the class until you add an assignment. Before I do that, I'm going to set up the class to be how I want it to be. So the first menu option is Preferences. So you can decide how you want blanks in your gradebook to count. You can do, it counts as a zero if you don't have a score in that slot and it's a missing assignment. You can choose to not give them a zero but mark it missing or you can choose to have it be not zero in the gradebook and also not missing. I have seen teachers use all three of these, so figure out which one you want it to be. This is rounding to one decimal place. You can go to two if you'd prefer, up to you. I think most people use one decimal. Enabling the percentage edit is not really required. Do you want to enable the score edit? Yes. So most of these I would leave the same. I wouldn't change any of these. We'll talk about custom mark in a second. So I'm going to click the assignments. Do you want to show the assignment mark? Yes. The category, the due date, you can choose if you want to see the due date or the date assigned. Show the maximum score that they could earn. Do you want to sort this by due date or assignment date or the name of the assignment? Do you want it to go ascending or descending? You can also do a secondary sort, so now it's going by due date and then by name. That's the default. And then you can choose if that secondary sort is ascending or descending. Do you want the display shown in portal column? So that's default is no, that's fine. And then the assignment creation button, there's a button that says create an assignment. So leave that on. For students, do you want to see their student ID in your gradebook? You may or may not. 
How do you want their name to appear? Do you want it to be the last name or the first name as first? Up to you. Do you want to show what grade level they're in? Which block they're in? The name of the course? Most of these things I would not really recommend seeing inside the gradebook. You may want to show alerts if that influences how you grade something. And then for sorting students, I always go with this one where it's sorted by last name, first name, and then middle. And then that's the name format that I'm going to be seeing. But this is how it's sorted. And then for others, you can have it show up with the students first, the list of assignments first, or as a spreadsheet where you can kind of see them both. There is an autosave feature, which is great when you have internet, but if you're not, you might want to allow, turn off the autosave so you have a button pop up with a click save. It's up to you. Do you want the default to be entering points, a score, or a percent? I do points. The how many columns you want to see in your gradebook. You can see you can go up to a lot of different columns if you want to have 50 different assignments showing up. The spreadsheet PDF showing students name that would be advisable. The last name first name. So most of this if you want to display attendance you can. If you want to show if they're present up to you. If you had created another gradebook and you want to copy these preferences to that gradebook this is where you would select which class you want to copy. You can select more than one class. So I'm going to click Save. So that's Preferences. Now if I go to Setup again, and this time I'm going to choose Categories and Assignment Tags. Okay, so now this is the place where you can add categories for your gradebook. So if you don't want it to be all in the same clump, you can say that you want a certain section to be worth a certain percentage of their scores. So this is where I would say that their homework is perhaps worth 25% of their grade. You can decide if you want a lowest score dropped, so maybe the lowest two homework scores. Or if you don't want any dropped, you can leave it blank. You can choose an icon to represent your homework, so say a piece of paper. We can add a new category, and so let's say the next one is tests. And let's say that is worth 75% of their grade. That makes up 100% of their grade. Maybe you want to drop the lowest test score or not. That's up to you. And you can choose an icon if you want to represent the test scores. If you have several gradebooks already set up, you can choose which gradebooks to save these categories to. So then you click Save. So it's successfully saved. Now if I go to Setup, I have the ability to add custom marks. On custom marks, I can decide how I want my input to count in the gradebook. So let's say I want a special symbol for when the student is absent. So I'm going to use the letter A for absent. I want them to get zero points. And I'm choosing points. You can instead choose the percentage of the total either way. You can add a description to say this is if they're absent. Yes, it should be counted as missing. This one's a little bit tricky. It doesn't have a button to add more marks, but if you hit save, it adds a column down below. And so now maybe I want to say the letter M for missing. It's worth nothing. For points, I can type in the description. And yes, I want it to count as missing. Save again. Maybe I'm excusing them from something. So this time I don't want the value to be zero. So I'm going to say it's excused. This should not count as missing, and it should be considered excused. And then again, if you want to save these preferences to other gradebooks, you can. And then you just hit save. All right, so once you have your gradebook set up with your custom marks and your categories, we can go ahead and view the spreadsheet. Again, I still have to add an assignment, so I'm going to go ahead and add an assignment. 
there are certain things that are required every time you add an assignment in. So say I'm adding an assignment about the syllabus being signed. You do not need a description or tags, but you do need to choose which category you want this to be in. So this would be homework for me. You can you have to choose the assignment that date. So I say assign this on the 10th. You can add the due date, which I do recommend doing. If this was an assessment, you can type in the assessment name and it'll link the scores from the test onto this assignment. However, a test has to be graded first before you can link it. So scan at least one Scantron and then you'll be able to link that assessment. For points possible, let's say the syllabus being signed is worth 10 points. It's up to you, but you do have to put how many points you want it to be. You don't have to put the possible score if you don't want. You can check this box if it's extra credit or not. So notice that removes the possible points. And then it's telling you which section it's going into. You can choose to save it to several gradebooks so you don't have to type this in several times. You can attach a file. So maybe I wanted to attach the actual syllabus to this assignment. You can choose that file. I'm not going to do that. So this is kind of nice if you're doing a homework assignment, you can attach that file. So then I can either save and add another assignment or I can just click save. So in this case, I'm going to click save. Now notice I have all of my students showing up. All of them are now failing my class. And the reason for this is because in my preferences, I said that a blank score counts as a zero and it counts as a missing assignment. So that is something that you may or may not want as a preference in your gradebook. I can also type in their scores here and it'll automatically update their grades. I can go ahead and type in my custom marks. So maybe this is an A if this person was absent. Maybe this person is missing. This person is excused from turning it in. All of those custom marks are available. And that's how you type in an assignment. If you want to have a printout of the student names, you can go to reports and choose a blank score sheet. This is going to give you a printout of their student's last name and first name. You can choose more or less information if you'd like. You can have how many columns you want to be allowed um, on your spreadsheet that you're creating and it will download this file for you. And what that allows you to do is print this out. You can type in the scores for those students so it gives you a way to record their data on a piece of paper and then later type it into the computer if you so choose.